Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, Ron's Keto Cafe, and I'm Ron. If you're new, welcome, and if you're a returning member, welcome back. And if you're a new member, could you please share, like, and smash that subscribe button. It helps other members know when I'm posting videos. And as always, before we get started, I'm not a medical doctor. I do not make any medical claims. This is all based on my own personal journey. So please do your homework first. And welcome to week 167 keto update. Well, I didn't lose any weight this week, guys, but I didn't gain any weight. So I would say that would be a non-scale victory. And uh, I would c continue to encourage each and one of you never to give up, even if you're not losing any weight and if you're staying the same like I have. Now, I've been staying the same pretty much now for the last year and a half. I have not lost any weight. And if I gained any weight, it has been much more than three or four pounds. So I think I'm doing phenomenally well. I pretty much think right now, guys, that I'm pretty much where I'm meant to be for the rest of my life, which is around 220 pounds, and, uh, and I'm good to go with that, you know? And, uh, yeah, I never wanted the Wonderland, which is uh, 200 pounds or less, but, you know, it, it came close a couple of times to 203, but, you know, I didn't feel right, and, and I, I feel as if this is where I need to be with my body weight. So be that as it said, we're going to continue on with the weight loss journey, and if you continue to lose more weight, that's fine, and if you don't, fine, as long as we don't gain too much. So how did the week go? Well, first, before we talk about our week, let's have a sip of the favorite cup of coffee, which is the uh, Nantucket Blend Medium Roast in my favorite Be Kind cup. Nothing beats a good fresh cup of coffee in the morning, right, guys? Especially when you had a rough night of sleeping. Yeah, so it's been very, very great with the weather-wise this past week. Yeah, we had nothing but sunshine all week for a change. We had a couple of 80-degree weather days like yesterday, and uh, which was uh, Saturday and uh, the 28th. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of walking this week. I pushed out almost uh, 10 miles of walking this week. I do not think I'm going to hit my 50-mile goal this month. I'm going to come close to around 45 miles, which is good. I uh, do have my left hip problem that I get, I get out in January, and when I go walking, if I'm walking more than two or three miles at a whack there, my, my, my left leg starts giving out on me, and then I'm, I'm limping home. So I got to be vigilant and careful when I'm going walking, because I don't want to take a chance of falling or get a ch take a chance that I'm going out and I can't make it home to where I got to call somebody up to help me out there just to drive me home. So that wouldn't be a good situation, because after all, when I am out walking, I'm enjoying myself, and I'm just... You know, I'm strolling and taking photographs and take a little bit of video here and there. And, you know, I talk to people who know, know who I am. And a lot of times I can get somebody to uh, grab a photograph of me like I did this past week at the Doyle Estate. And if I'm going to do, I'll do a split comparison. Like when I was at the, uh, uh, the two photographs that you're seeing was when I first started my journey in 2020. I was at Sholin Farms and the other one was at uh, the uh, Doyle Estate this past week there. And I, I met a new... Uh, friend of mine there she hadn't met me in a while but she never met me actually you know I was at the coffee shop I had a coffee and a muffin and uh, her name is uh, Barbara and I won't share I won't share her last name but she's looking for a walking partner too so and she's been losing weight through uh, Weight Watchers and uh, you know so now I got somebody else hopefully at some point she'll uh, I'll give her a text and say hey you doing anything today you want to go walking with me and uh you know, it's, and, and I enjoy that, talking to somebody and walking with people, you know, and they, they, you know, it's fun to go walking, you can grab photos, grabs together, talk about your, your, your spouses there and what's going on in the world and everything, and so it's been fun. So Friday night, we did the charity at the St. Cecilia's Parish over there in the city of Lemister, and uh, there was one winner that won the uh, Hot 13s, there, the uh, Hot there, and they ended up getting the bonus, so they ended up with $900, which is good. The two carryover coveralls didn't go, so those are kind of getting up there again for 3,000 to 2,000 numbers. They could go any time. Uh, she had a great crowd of 199 people. My wife didn't win anything Friday night, but, you know, again, it's just a night out. It's a night out of volunteering, and it's what I enjoy doing. And, uh, again, I would encourage you guys, if you knew the weight loss, um, if you're bored, get involved with some of your local uh, organizations because uh, many of them are always looking for volunteers. You know, you go to your local city hall and just say, you know, a lot of times your local mayor or your selectmen, if you got a selectman, you know, you can uh, get involved with uh, almost anything that's going on. You know, it's free to volunteer. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. And, you know, if nobody shows up, the world shuts down, right? So, and that's what I do. So yesterday, which is, uh, you know, 28th, it was Saturday, it was 82 degrees in our city, it was really warm, it wasn't muggy, but it was a nice day, and uh, we had our annual Halloween parade that the mayor puts out, you know, what that is, is they, all the kids get 
going costumes and they go at the bottom of the uh, Walgreens area and then they march up the street over there and uh, that's followed by, well, actually the, the mayor comes up with his, his float and his truck there and his, uh, and the, uh, the other trucks are following behind him and the kids come up and anybody can join in on the parade and just walk it and then they dispense at the lower common area and down in the main street area in the uh, local stores and the, uh, you know, everybody, uh, the volunteers, they pass out candy to the kids and the, the kids are really cute in the costumes. I'm going to have a couple of photographs above the timeline in front of the green screen over here and I'm going to show you the parade afterwards. And uh, on the on the back end of the video, and it ran, like, it ran about maybe 10 minutes, but I had to pitch, I had to get rid of the music that was in the background because they were doing copyrighted music and I didn't want to get flagged by YouTube or Facebook. So, I, I, here's the deal that really ticked me off yesterday. You know, I asked for volunteer. My friend Wayne would have helped me had he known early enough, and I, I didn't let him know to that morning, so he wasn't able to help me, you know. You know, because usually you know, when I get when I film, I like to have an extra person filming with two cameras because I always like to enjoy two cameras and get some B-roll video, they call it. B-roll video is just going around getting little video clips and clipping them all together and make a longer video, you know, make your video more interesting. And uh, so I, I, you know, I got there around 1230 and I set up my camera where I usually where I set up the camera for the tractor parade. And then I'm looking over there and I saw another guy with a camera. And I said, well, what the heck? So I went over there and talked to him and he had the studio camera that I saw. And he says, okay. And he says, oh, yeah, I'm doing this for the studio. They said, they just hired me and a whole bunch of people. And I said, well, what the heck? I says, I've been doing video volunteering for the last 12 years and I've been after them to hire me and they didn't hire me for whatever reason. I've gotten awards in my work and I've gotten a degree in that field and, and they didn't hire me. It's like, what the F, you know? So I said to myself, okay, okay. Well, when I go talk to them about it, I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna say because I wanna always leave on good terms. But um, after the Colonial Band is done for this year and I gotta talk to John and Steve about it, the uh, people who run the Colonial Band and just say, this is my last year filming. As far as the studio concerned, if you want me to continue filming, I'll film and I'll give you the video file and you can maybe do your own YouTube channel because they're not treating me fair and anybody else fair that's been there right along. And uh, over half the guys, actually all but two guys are left there from the original crew that's been over there for many years because they can't deal with this uh, guy that's, uh, um, you know, you know, man managing the place, you know, you know, so it's just like the emergency management center over there. He lost 17 people all in one day. They all quit on him because they got tired of the bullshit. So, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, when you treat people like crap, you know, and that's what happens. They, they get tired of it and they go somewhere else. So, anyways, as far as the uh, city activity goes, I'm pretty much done with it. I, I don't want to volunteer too much anymore. I just want to go do my own thing. If they have a local event that I want to film, I go film it for my own personal files, and I'll keep it in my own archives, and that's it. And even the commission, the uh, historical commission that I'm a member of, uh, my, my term expires in April of uh, next year, and I am not returning back as a member. I'll stay on as an associate member. If you need me, I'll come in on occasion, but I don't want to feel obligated to going down there every Tuesday and Thursday because I got a life and I don't want to do it no more. I've been doing this for a long time now, and even then, they got a Facebook page and they don't trust me enough to put stuff on Facebook, so I say to hell with you, you know, and, and, and that's it. And, and I'm not getting permission if I got to get call you up every time and say, hey, I'm putting this on Facebook for you guys so you guys can get the views and everything. And, uh, and that sort of thing. And uh, I'm not dealing with that no more. I got too much of going on. Um, so I'm going back to school, as most of you know, in January. And uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be video and film production. And I was talking to a, um, somebody that works for the Chamber of Commerce yesterday, one of my friends of mine. And, you know, he's got me almost convinced to where I'm going to go down to Fitchburg State College. It's talk to them about transferring everything over to there and do a four-year program and try to get my master's degree and uh, I think that would be a good fit for me uh, it would be a better fit for me because it would be closer than Gardner and they have a great facility over there for film and video production where they can send me out on location and they can have me go directly through the studio for the for the Fitchburg Access Television Station and I can I can you know maybe get some credits go work you know doing some uh, local, local events for them and continue on with my own personal projects and continue on with my YouTube channel. Now, 
I, I know it's that guy, you know, Anne Marie, if you're watching this video, you know as well as I do sometimes, you know, you get you get really excited, like you get 10 new subscribers, subscribers, and the next thing you know, you go back on two days later and you lose 20, and then you lose watch hours, and I can't figure out that and why it happens. So if anybody has a solution for me, you guys let me know. So I'm not going to worry about the watch hours anymore. It, it is what it is. It'll happen when it happens, and if it never happens, that's fine. But be that as it say, as it said, I'm thinking about opening up a new channel. I will let you know when I decide to do this channel. This channel is going to be just recipes. I ain't going to get no jibber-jabbing and no talking or anything like that over the videos. And I don't want to restrict it to just keto. And, but I do want to do like keto, low-carb, and some not-so-low-carb meals and other, other just regular standard American meals. And uh, they're not going to be any live videos that are going to happen in that channel. And uh, so I was watching a fellow YouTuber that uh, he's a young kid and uh, he, he makes quite a bit of money. He's, he's got a, one channel, he's got over a million subscribers and he makes quite a bit of money. But he gets right to the point. He does a jibber jabber in between sentences. He talks about how to do things. And he, he said, if you, I mean, how to get your channel monetized within 30 days and everything like that. And it made a lot of sense to me and how he did it and everything like that. And, uh, so I gotta, the first thing I got to do is get better. I'm going to get really good quality video for my uh, videos, for my uh, recipes. And uh, the first uh, videos that I'm going to be doing, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to film out 30 recipes. Like in other words, I'm going to do one, all shackles. Well, shackles are cheese and an egg and you just mix it. You put it on a little mini dash and you now make a variety of different uh, ideas and different uh, you know, uh, recipes to put it all together for that. And there'll be like about maybe 30 or 60 videos up to do. And when I launch the channel, I'll have 30 videos ready to go on there along with the shorts and anything else I need to put up there to get the channel going and, uh, and make sure I get all the affiliated links below the channel on the timeline and, uh, you know, with the recipes and the macros and everything to make it easy for you guys. And, uh, and I have some nice, really good music in the background. And that was the other important issue that he is stressed about music and copyright. Now, I know a lot of people have been using epidemic sound, but when I have used epidemic sound, for some reason, it tells me it's copyrighted and it gives me bullshit. So I don't know what's up with that. But when I, when I do, maybe because I just got a regular paid version, maybe I need a special license for that. And I'm not spending any extra than $20 a month for epidemic sound. So I got rid of it. And I'm now I'm using Filmora music, audio sound music. And, and I can also use the YouTube library of music too. They got a great music uh, library too, as long as you, and you can use it in fair use. And uh, you have to contribute the artist and all that stuff there because you want to make sure that if you do get monetized, you don't get no strikes against you. So, and, but the only other thing too is about this channel name. I don't know what I'm going to use for channel name. I got about three or four names on my, uh, my YouTube channel, other channels that I never use that there's no subscribers, and it's just a regular name up there. So I could change to one of those before I launch this channel. So if you, you know, if you, if you got any like uh, names, uh, awesome recipes or something like that, uh, you know, maybe I'll take a survey and what the, for another channel name. But uh, it, it'll probably be at least two or three months before I launch the uh, new channel, because I, you know, I, I just enjoy filming for you guys. Like today, I'm making what's called the chicken frigo. What that is, is a chicken stew with dumplings, and I'm going to make it like my mom used to make. And I got all the ingredients and everything, and I'm going to really take my time in filming this, because when I'm filming the end now, and I got to have good background guides, and I want to get the overhead camera shot. And I got to start picking up some clear plastic bowls and some clear, good clear set that I can start using for filming so I can get a higher end video. But when I go on the line now for video, uh, when I'm watching a YouTube channels, I, I'm, I'm specifically studying now how they film with, with the overhead camera, with the side camera, and the pan and zoom type thing. And uh, yeah, so I, I got a placemat for the top of my desk area so when I film out and stuff like that, but it, the problem was when, you, when I unraveled it, it was all bu bu hell, bubbles in it, and, and plus it won't stay flat. So I'm gonna go down to Walmart later today and pick up what I wanna get, and then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I already got the return slip made out for that for Amazon. So that I'm going to return that and Amazon is pretty cool about stuff like that. They, I return plugs on Amazon without the box. I just put them in a Ziploc bag. And as long as you get the barcode, they, uh, 
for the uh, QR code. Don't, don't take it back. I'm going to sip a coffee, guys. I'm really hanging. So, anyways, um, yeah, so I'm going to have our church fairs coming up. We got a lot of church fairs coming up in the month of November. I did volunteer for both days. Now, I did volunteer to do the uh, Veterans Day ceremony. I'm going to talk to the uh, the studio. Say, are you guys covering the Veterans Day? Because I just as soon have it off and go help the church fair out, you know. And then I can do another thing that I want to do, which is again, take photographs of a dedication for somebody that passed away for, that was part of the commission members for many years. So we're going to see what happens with that when I go talk to Scott this week. And, uh, you know, the only two concerts I want to do now going forward is the... Uh, that I'm going to choose a corral in the, the, the last Colonial Band concert that I'm going to do. And then I'll talk to John and Steve about it and see what they want to do. If they want to continue with the studio or do their own thing, you know. But it's just too bad, you know, because like I said, I you know, people get tired of the bullshit and then they end up moving on somewhere else. And I mean, I don't mean to swear this morning, but, you know, I get I get so angry sometimes. But I said, again, when we have local events, I'm going to film it for my own. These are local events. Anybody can take photographs and anybody can film it. And, you know, I was there yesterday, and I saw a guy from the Fitchburg Sentinel, and he was new, but he just got hired. I said, what the heck? I says, I was doing that right along, and you couldn't rehire me back. So these are some things that tick me off, you know. So I want to go to school, and I want to get my degree. Um, you know, I'm hearing some things about some other things going on. I can't get to the detail on my on what's going on, but there might be a way eventually that we'll be able to regress our age 20 or 30 years. And if that happens, then I'm going to take that I'm going to plunge, take that chance and, uh, you know, you know, uh, you live it all over again. But until that happens, you, you know, I'm going to figure out. I only got what I got left handed this time on the planet, uh, you know, which isn't much. Even if I live 20 or 30 years, I'm 67 now. If I live 30 years, it'd be 97. And it'd be old man, great uh, periwinkle there, like in the old match game series, you know. Uh, you guys, you guys, you guys and gals must remember that. And if you don't know the series, go on Buzzer TV or just type it into YouTube. Uh, just say Richard Dawson uh, uh, meltdown or something like that. He had he had a meltdown one time. It was funny. It was funny as anything. You know that I still watch that show today. It's cla It's classic. Eugene Raven, dumb Dora is so dumb. How dumb is she? She's so dumb. When she made a cup of coffee, she forgot to put the blank in. <laughs> you got to fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so at the height of the popularity of the show back in the 70s, they were almost getting ready to cancel that show. And then they let every, everything hang out as far as, you know, talking about boobs and all that stuff. And uh, that became so popular, it was kicking everybody's butt in the morning and the afternoon. They played a couple of times a day, you know, and the great celebrities like Fanny Flagg and, and uh, Lee Mary Weather, Dawson, Brett Summers, and... Uh, you know, Charles Nelson Riley, they were, uh, Gary Berghoff, the one that used to play on MASH. I mean, yeah, they were all fantastic people that played on that show. They, they show ran many, many years, too. Okay, so here's a question for you. Um, since I was just talking about shows, what is your favorite game show over the years? Mine, mine has always been The Price is Right with the old Bob Barker series and, of course, The Match Game. So what was your favorite shows? We had Hollywood Squares, uh, you, you know, uh, $10,000 Pyramid with Dick Clark and all the great shows. Or what was your favorite show over the years if you're watching my video? So anyways, be watching for some more recipes. I'll continue putting recipes up on this channel as well as getting the, ready to put up some new ones on the newer channel. And uh, yeah, and again, if you got a suggestion for me, um, about that, let me know. And again, we got Donna's got two doctor appointments this week. Got to keep up with that. It's been really rough on me with that. And uh, I, I, I. So, and uh, again, we're going to continue to have a successful week. And uh, I got a, only a few days left in the month. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. And uh, happy Halloween. Have a safe week. And uh, enjoy your day. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming along. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for watching.